You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen. And Jen. Letting it all hang out for your love life. Examining your dating experiences and answering your hot topic dating questions. Just you and us. Jen Squared. No topic is off limits and no filters involved. We are here to help you do dating on your terms. If you have a question you would like us to answer or would like to immediately upgrade your love life with our collection of classes and exclusive merchandise, meet us over now at singlesmartfemale.com. Hey, Single Smart Females. It is Jen plus Jen here, your romantic fairy godmamas, coming to you to answer your questions about dating and love. Jen, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Hit us. Hit us hard. Ooh. Okay. (laughs) Watch out for my right hook. No. (laughs) Okay. Well, let's start with this question from Miss What Should I Do? So the question reads, Dear Jens, so let me start out by saying I met the only person I have ever loved at 19 years old. And at that time, he had just turned 25. I had friends that were older and we ended up at a house party at this guy's house who I then later fell in love with. After his house party, he and I hit it off and just had a great connection that we continued to hang out for about four months after meeting. Meanwhile, I'm falling harder and harder for this guy. About four months into us just talking and being young, I find out that he's talking to another girl as well. When I found out, I was livid, and I went off on him and even went as far as to contact her. Long story short, for a while, he went between the two of us, acting as if he couldn't make up his mind who he wanted to be with. He ends up picking this girl due to realistic and I think a very mature decision, which was that she was closer to his age. So therefore, she was more settled and he did not want to rob me of the best years of my life that I had not even yet experienced. He ends up marrying this girl, I heard through the grapevine, and five years go by and I still randomly think about this guy and wonder if he thinks about me too and if he's happy. Six years pass now and the friend that took me to that party that night where I met him passes away of a sudden death. I ended up texting him not knowing if his number was even still the same six years later and said, hey, Sorry, not trying to cause any issues. I know you are married and wondering why I'm texting you, but I just wanted you to know that our friend has passed. I got a reply and he said that he was sad to hear that and he had actually been thinking about me. Little did I know that this one text would lead to me now. It turns out that he was getting a divorce and he was not living with his wife since the week after they got married. And he said that he never quit thinking about me. He wanted to hang out, so I gave it a shot. And sure enough, chemistry, passion, everything was still there for each other. He files for divorce immediately, and we started talking and seeing each other nonstop. We are now seven months in of dating, and the divorce was so drug out, and it's just now filed. We have had a lot happen in our seven months of dating, including he lost his job, his house, etc. And on top of that, we have been fighting a lot. When he gets in fights, he runs and hides and cuts off all communication with me for days. He doesn't do anything during those days but hang out with his brother and ignore me by not responding to any texts, phone calls, etc. And this goes on for days. We had a huge blowout this weekend and I haven't heard from him for four days. It's so embarrassing and I never know what to tell people like are we together? Are we not? Or what's going on? I can't ever answer these questions because I never know myself. He told me next time we get in a fight and he has to tell me he's done, it's going to be for good this time. And there would be no going back. He told me he was done and here we are day number four and I don't know if we are really done or not. He's hiding out at his house and he won't answer my texts or calls. I feel like if we are really done, I deserve an explanation, something other than complete silence. I'm so upset and I don't know what to think. Okay. Jen, I'm curious. Do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, uh, yeah. I, mean, I have a lot of thoughts. Never at a loss of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so much for sending us your question. And I feel like this is extreme tunnel vision. This is feeling like. Your hope for love is all wrapped up in one man. I feel like you're putting the ball all in his court. 
mm-hmm. not living your romantic life on your terms. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel to start, Jen. Okay, so I have to say this feels like a world I used to live in years and years ago. And I want to tell you right now that if you want to be an adored woman, you have to take a stand of not living in this world anymore. This is not the world of an adored woman. We don't do this kind of drama. We might have a little drama happen here and there, but this is not where we, this is not where we live. This is not where we play. This is not where we do much or whatsoever. We do not pay attention to men that treat us like this. We pay attention to men exclusively to the men who treat us the way that we want to be treated. And you're calling something love that's just drama. And it's not love. And I'm sorry. I don't, I don't say that often at all. It is just drama. Years ago with my ex-husband, he used to do this kind of drama quite a bit. And I remember I, we were going to marriage counseling at, and we were just doing all kinds of stuff. And, and it finally hit me when the marriage counselor asked me, you know, what has to change for this to stop? When I realized how romantically immature we were. Mm. And we were calling it love. And it, it hit me so hard. And I realized this was, it's ridiculous. This was, this was a ridiculous interpretation of love. And, and I know there's still a narrative out there that makes us believe that this is what, what it is. But I'm going to be honest with you because I want you to walk in our world. This is nothing like love. Love is trust. Love isn't just lust and some chemistry and then a whole bunch of fighting and then coming back together and doing it all again. Love isn't somebody hiding out somewhere and and the other person wondering for days where it's going on. There is not this level of immaturity when it comes to interacting with each other. I think Jen's right. You've got your identity, your romantic identity wrapped up in this man when there's nothing there. And I know that's a very harsh reality to have to face, but I don't want you spending any more time wasting any more of your identity on this. It's pointless to you. It's not serving you whatsoever. You're getting no joy from it whatsoever. You are what I call surviving on scraps of romantic attention. Oh, that's a great way to put it, Jen. I agree. Totally. Scraps. You are saying it's okay to treat you this way because Mm -hmm. you keep paying attention to him. Adored women exclusively pay attention to the men that treat them the way they want to be treated. Yeah, Jen, there's something about the thrill when you're not in the adored woman mindset. There's there's this this thrill or like a drug or something that it's the the fear. Does he like me? Is Mm -hmm. it gonna work? Is it gonna work? And then then he comes and he's and he shows you attention and you're like, oh, oh, he does like me. He does like me. And then they run away again. And then you're like, oh, it's this. It's a cycle. It's a really nasty cycle. And I remember the cycle really well. And what I'm telling you is this cycle will not get you what you want. Right. This cycle is going to blow up at some point. If you do manage to stay together, it's not going to create the relationship that you want. Or you're the life that you want. Mm-hmm. Because being in this kind of turmoil on a regular basis will not help you to have a prosperous life, to climb mountains mm-hmm. of success. You will be stuck in this mire, this quicksand of relationship that drags you down and doesn't build you up in your life. Jennifer, I don't think I could have put that better myself. That was really good. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly, yeah. That's absolutely something very much to consider. It is really, really challenging to do all the things that you want to do as an ambitious, single, smart female when you choose to be in this kind of drama. And I'm going to hit you with some hard truth. This is a choice. This is 100% your choice to be in this. And I'm hoping, I've got my fingers crossed right now, that you decide to back the heck up and take a different route and choose men to be in your mantourage that treat you the way that you want to be treated. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. 
When you choose to stay in romantic drama, you will never reach your full potential in any area of your life. Today's show is brought to you by thelovesickcure.com. Does your love life suck because you can't move on from the idea of him? Does every man you meet pale in comparison to the way he made you feel? It's okay, lady love. We 100% understand and have been there before. Whether you'd like the opportunity to get him back or to completely move on, we know this only happens when you cure your heartbreak and love sickness. Let us help you do that today at thelovesickcure.com. Hey, lover girl, this is Jen again. Don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share Single Smart Female with all of your single smart girlfriends. And if you would like to play around and learn more about mantourage dating, come see me at singlesmartfemale.com. Talk to you next time.